Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Today we are going to be creating a countdown timer using motion for both your live streams and for Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. Go ahead and open up motion. If you don't have the project browser, push command option N. Once we get our project browser, we are just going to go ahead and select the Final Cut title as we do very frequently. From there, we're going to want to make sure that the duration is about the length of the timer that we want. So today we'll make a 60 second timer and you can obviously change that for yourself. Once we're in motion, go ahead and delete your title background and your type text here. Here. Otherwise, the background layer will be affected in Final Cut Pro, so we don't want that. From there, we can go ahead and jump into our generators and locate the numbers generator. We'll drag that into our layers panel there, and that'll automatically drop it into the middle of our project. Go ahead and go into your inspector and go to your format settings. We can change the size up to 300, and then we can change the alignment to be centered. Jump into your properties and set your anchor point to 100 pixels, and that should get the numbers dead center in your project. Go ahead and jump back into your text generator settings and go into your generator. Now you'll see some options here. We have our animate tab and you would think we would want to use that but for some very specific reasons we're actually not going to do that. We're going to set this up in a manual way so that our timing is always consistent. For whatever reason when you use the animate feature it can make things get out of sync and I'm not sure totally why so we're going to just not use the animate feature. After that go ahead and set your value to the length of duration of your project so I'm going to set this to 60. Now if we play through you'll notice that it is not changing. So to fix that go ahead go to your value settings and click this down arrow and we will go to add parameter behavior and set that to rate. In your rate settings go ahead and set this to negative one and basically negative one it's changing one value for every one second in the project. If we play through we can actually see that our countdown timer is counting down exactly as it should. Now something that should be noted is that let's say that this gets to zero it's going to start going into the negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. So to fix that, go ahead, select your number again, go to the value settings, click that down arrow. We're going to add another parameter behavior called clamp. Now clamp will set it so that this can never go below or above if you want a certain number that you set. So I'm going to set this to minimum of zero. So now this project, once it gets to zero, will stop there and that should be great. So we now have the basic countdown function. From here, let's go ahead and add a basic animation. And I'm going to show you two different animation types you can do. Go ahead, select your numbers, go up to filter, go down to stylize and set this to bad TV. Now this is going to look all funky. We just need to change our roll to zero. So now it's dead center. So it now has the bad TV effect applied. What we want is for the bad TV effect to apply for every second that this countdown happens. So it's got a nice little animation to it. So we're going to use another parameter behavior for that. Go ahead, click this down arrow, add parameter behavior, and we are going to select oscillate. And if I push command eight, you can see what oscillate is doing. It's just consistently going up and down on the value throughout the whole animation. The first thing we're going to want to do is because this is a 60 second time timeline, we're going to set the speed here to 60. So now this is going to happen once for every second in our project. If I play through, you'll notice that the animation isn't happening typically at the most ideal times. So we're going to have to offset this. To do that, go ahead, go to the very beginning and we're going to change our phase here. And you're just going to want to drag the phase until if you look at the keyframe editor here, um, the phase is at the very top right at the beginning. So it's like it's starting off at 60 and then fading down to 59. So now everything should be lined up so that every second the bad TV effect is changing the number. So we now have a countdown timer with a basic animation to it. Now I'm going to show you one other animation type you could try if you don't want this bad TV effect. So I'm going to go ahead and disable the bad TV effect, select our numbers and we can also disable the oscillate effect. So what we're going to do is select our numbers, go up to behaviors and we're going to go into our animation categories here for the text. Now this should work with just about any of the categories here. So I'm going to kind of choose one at random. Let's try flip in. I don't know what this is actually going to look like. 
Go ahead and select your flip in layer there or your behavior and go to the very end and push O so that it's extended over the entire duration of the clip. Now normally what this would do is make it so the animation happens very slowly over the whole duration. So what we need to do is go into our control settings and go down here to the loops panel. Now under loops, we're gonna wanna set this to 60 loops so that it's happening once every second throughout the whole duration of the project. After that, make sure that your apply speed is set to once per loop. So now if I play back, we can see that the animation is happening on our text every single second. So you're gonna wanna publish some of your settings to Final Cut Pro so you have some basic control over your countdown timer. So for example, we'll wanna publish the value here. So let's go ahead, click this down arrow and push publish. And then we'll probably wanna publish a lot of our format settings here like our font and our uh, size of our countdown timer, maybe even our alignment. All of these settings will need to be published. Typically with text in motion, you don't need to do this, but because this is actually a generator and not a text object, you do need to publish each of these settings. After that, we can just push Command S and that will enable us to publish this to Final Cut Pro. So I'll just call this the countdown timer and just put that in whatever category we like and push publish. So now if I open up Final Cut Pro, you can just jump into your titles and locate your countdown timer. So from here, we can see that if we play it back, it's working perfectly. Now there is something important I should note. If you wanna set this to beyond 60 seconds, say like 120 seconds, what's gonna happen is the countdown timer will work great for the 60 seconds, but if you extend this out, it's going to really slow down the animation. It won't be on time any longer. Additionally, if you actually shorten this countdown timer, it's not going to work either. It's just gonna speed it up really fast. So you need to leave the duration of the title at 60 seconds. Now, if you wanted to set this to, let's say 45 seconds, but you didn't want the entire duration of the clip there, you could actually set it to 45 you can right click and set it as a new compound clip and you can now trim this compound clip down to whatever length you need it to be. If you wanna learn the basics of motion, make sure you check out this video. Also, my patrons are gonna receive three countdown timers as a thank you for their support. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.